Hello again, Christ Community Church. This is the meditation I have prepared for the Saturday newsletter for April 18th. And uh, it's prompted by some of my experiences this week, um, where I realized that we're in a time of wild and varying blame starting to be cast about related to the pandemic. Um, and conspiracy theories are popping up like we hope the spring flowers soon will do. And so in a lot of my contacts, particularly this week, I've, I felt a lot of that starting to rise. And to some degree, it's normal human reaction that we need to understand, but that's not necessarily what this meditation is about. I do want to remind us all that as was once famously said, the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. Now, that is secularly speaking, humanly speaking. For us, as people of faith, we have layers that we can add to that particular truth. Our scriptures show and teach us a healthy, spiritual, faith-filled way to deal with fearfulness when it rises around us and in us. And that way of dealing with it is to trust in God. You can find pointers to this in, for instance, Isaiah 12, verse 2, um, and in Psalm, in the Psalms, like Psalm 56, verses 3 and 4, and many other places. Psalm 112, verses 6 to 8, particularly speaks to how those who esteem God above all else, unfortunately, most of our translations still use the word fear there, but it, that word actually means so much more than being afraid of God. It means awe and esteem and those kinds of things. But uh, at the beginning of that psalm, that's how, that's how it's stated. For people that esteem God above all else, um, they remain unshaken. They remain grounded, stable, and less phased, less put off track by things that play on our fears. Their hearts and spirits are solid and secure within them as a result of their trust in God. And kind of surprisingly, they remain exceedingly generous and compassionate instead of fearfully huddling and hoarding. How can they do that? Because they have faith in a God who provides, and gratitude for that exceedingly generous God, who gave the great gift of freedom to have relationship with him again through his Son. And it's that that enables them to have these positive qualities in fearful times for others. That son, who opened up that relationship possibility again, in a beautiful encouragement to a people he knew to tend to be preoccupied with getting, said, as recorded in Luke 12, and this is my paraphrase of verses 29 to 32, don't set your heart and mind on getting, on figuring it all out. Lean into God's giving, God's generosity. The world that does not know God truly fusses over these things. Instead, soak yourself in relationship with God. Trust that God knows exactly what you need and cares enough to provide you with that. You will find yourself less fretful about the things the rest of the world seems to fret over. Seek, look for, watch for, live by the ways of the kingdom of God as you live your life on this earth. Because Jesus taught this, sorry, because Jesus taught this, and because I love learning about the kingdom, and sharing what I have learned, I plan to post a few sermons on that subject 
in the next few weeks. Usually on Sunday morning at around 10 is when it will be opened up. That's my plan. So when you feel fear trying to grab you, when you encounter the next blame-making information source, or the next conspiracy-forwarding pal says to you, hey, look at this. I have two of them on social media that I, I keep friends with on purpose uh, just to see what's out there in their world. And I do somewhat enjoy reading some of that stuff recreationally. But when I feel it starting to make me fearful, I pull back and do what I'm advising and what scripture advises here. So when, it, when that comes to you again, blame making or conspiracy planning or scheming, uh, remember all this and act accordingly. Do not, do not buy into fear. Notice it rising in you and choose instead to lean into your faith in a generous, compassionate God. Till we meet again, shalom and serenity.